Greetings, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 247 of Ask Dave. And we're going to talk about measuring ground systems. Have you ever wondered whether your ground system was installed well enough? Or perhaps your dirt's uh, like in the desert and sandy and you don't know if it even does any good at all. Is there any way to measure it? Well, the answer is a qualified yes. And what we're going to talk about today is a meter that will measure, uh, give you some actual numbers on the resistance of your ground. Well, let's see how this is done. Naturally, there's a meter involved. Now, because of the expense of these meters, they're not often used in amateur radio. And in fact, when houses are put together, people just, uh, the electricians just obey the code and so on, and they put their ground rod in or two ground rods or whatever is required. Um, but there is a way to measure the ground. Now, there's some caveats, and I'll get into those later. Let's start with this little thing right here. Um, Brad Rich gave this to me because I did a video of him and his ground, and he showed how he measured his ground. He had two of these meters, and so he, he uh, gifted me this one. This is a Chinese meter, and we'll take a look at it here. This is a Chinese DLG DI120. These are available uh, on Amazon and other places like that. They're around $300. And when I got the thing, um, I thought, well, good grief, let's figure out how it works because it's kind of interesting. You push the button and it takes a little while to step down through a calibration cycle and after it has calibrated itself it says it's ready for measurements okay so here we go there's nothing in there now let's do this there's a test loop that comes with it that should read 5.1 ohms we got to get right there we go 5.1 ohms Okay, now I thought, well, now that's interesting. I, I want to test this a little bit. So I put together a couple loops. These are loops with a resistance in there. One of them is a 10 ohm resistor. One of them is a one kilowatt resistor. Now, if we put these in to the device like that, okay, it tells us that's the 10 ohm resistor. Isn't that interesting? Obviously the resistor is shorted, right? It's shorted by this piece of wire that I've um, soldered to it. Let's take a look at the other one. Now this is the 1K uh, resistor and we'll put this in there and it's not going to want to give us a reading. It's too high in resistance. Yeah, it's just too high in resistance for that 1K. I was getting some readings earlier, but I'm not getting a reading now. Oh, there we go. It's 1K. See, it doesn't like measuring something that high. Well, you don't want a ground system that's 1K ohms uh, to get there anyway. So the question now is how does this thing work? Now, to do that, I set up an experiment. Let me turn this off. It squeals. Yeah, I set up an experiment. We take our loop, which has a resistor in it. Okay. We put the clamp. This is the big old giant clamp that we see here. And the wire comes up through the hole, okay. And then we measure the resistance here, let's it's, say it's 10 ohms. Now, this is a DC short, obviously. So the question is, what's going on across that resistor? So I hooked an oscilloscope and put the probes on either side of this resistor. 
And lo and behold, here's what I found. Here's a picture of the experiment. Okay, I've got the 10 ohm resistor connected through, uh, connected up with the scope probes across it, and then the line goes through the meter. And you can see it reads 10 ohms. And you can see in the background that there is a waveform on the scope, a sine wave. Let's take a closer look at that waveform. This is what it looks like on the scope. I thought what I would do is uh, just print this so I could make a negative of it and it will be um, a lot easier to see. So here is the, uh, here's what it looks like on the scope. Now up here where the arrow shows is the um, RMS value. It's 25.3 millivolts, okay? So it's an AC waveform, and if you look up here, you see that it is about a 1.6 kilohertz waveform, okay? So what the thing is doing is inducing a voltage in the loop, and then measuring the current and calculating the resistance. By the way, that 1.6 six kilohertz. If I put this right up, do you hear that high-pitched squeal? That high-pitched squeal is about 1.6 kilohertz. Okay, so it's an audio frequency that it's putting through there. So let me draw out what is happening. We have a resistor, in this case 10 ohms. Okay, and it comes here, and it's a single turn transformer. And this right over here goes to an oscillator, which gives you about 1.5 kilohertz. So it's inducing a voltage here. And the voltage it is inducing is about 25 millivolts, okay? Now the meter also contains, if you look at it closely, you'll see that there are two of these things here. There's one here and one here. There are two loops that are closed when you let that close like that. And what the other loop does is that it goes to another one turn transformer and it induces a voltage in the secondary and then the, this is measured with a voltmeter, okay? So you take this voltage plus the amount of voltage that's induced here and you configure the current in the circuit. Okay, this voltage is comparable to the current that's in here, because this current induces a current in here and so on. This has a fixed resistor in it and it measures the voltage. Okay, so you've got the current and the voltage, and then all you have to do is use Ohm's law to figure the resistance. Easy to do, okay? Now, knowing this, we know that the meter has to measure a complete circuit. If you just put this over a ground rod that is not connected to anything, it's going to measure infinite ohms because there's no loop. No loop like the, the little loop we see here, which is our, our little loop. Now, the way this works is this. If you have outside your house a ground rod, okay, and it is connected in your meter, your electrical meter, to the neutral. Remember, you get your neutral and your hot. And this neutral is connected to ground in one place at your house, and that's right at the electrical panel meter. Okay? So if you put this right here around here, 
you're going to see a circuit that goes all the way up to the neutral to the power pole and the power poles are grounded. The neutral is grounded on the power poles. So here's your circuit right here because it's measuring this ground. So what this will do is measure in ohms the quality of this ground here against basically the rest of the system. Now if we uh, do it in like you, you just got to remember you've got to have a closed circuit. So if you have a ground and it is connected to your radio and the ground is also connected to the DC power supply okay the uh, DC negative here the black wire which I, I realize in house wiring the black wire is hot. In DC the red wire is hot. Um, this is connected to the neutral or three wire ground here and this will go over to the panel and then to the panel's ground. And so um, what you're measuring is this right here. Now if you get a nice low resistance here and here. You can measure here, you can measure here, okay. Um, you can be pretty happy. If this resistance is fairly high, it means one of these grounds is not very good. And you might check your uh, neutral ground to make sure you've got a proper ground, it doesn't come out of the ground when you tug on it. Uh, and also make sure you've got a good ground here. If you've got very rocky, sandy soil, you may not be getting a very good ground. This is the problem Brad Rich ran into. He had to put in multiple ground rods to get this down uh, to the 5 ohms he was uh, looking for. By the way, 5 ohms seems to be kind of the, the magic number. Now, um, there's lots of places that you can measure uh, the ground and I'm going to show you one uh, where I'm going to measure the ground of my um, the ground wire coming from the ground rod up to my station. I'm going to put this around it. Now note that that's in a loop because if you take the station ground which is a rod like this and it's attached to ground by um, a thick cable, okay. Now attached to this are, um, this also goes to the ground uh, lightning protectors here and then the cable comes in here to the radio. Well um, if I measure here all these cables uh, come into the radio where they are grounded. The radio is grounded there. So I've got a loop just right here. It doesn't even hit the ground rod. If I wanted to know how effective the ground rod would be, I'd have to measure down here. Okay, so let's do that measurement and then uh, we'll see what happens. I think we'll find that that ground looks like it's really good with very, very low resistance. Okay, this is my ground here station ground and this is the big thick cable that comes off of this and goes down to the ground rod. It's a uh, number two uh, stranded wire. Uh, it's insulated and it goes down to the ground rod. So we're going to turn on our... Okay, we put this around the wire and it gives us 0.059 or 0 0.06 ohms, which is outstandingly low resistance for the ground. Now I want to talk about something here that's uh, kind of the fly in the ointment, if you will. This is designed for measuring utility grounds. Utility power is 60 hertz parts of the world. It's 50 hertz. Okay, and so if you take the audio signal that this puts out, which is about 1.5 uh, kilohertz, 
uh, you're b basically measuring the performance at utility frequencies, which are audio frequencies, and your ground rod can be very good for that. But what we're interested in is grounding at RF, at RF frequencies. Now, there's the RF doesn't necessarily follow the same path as the utility ground. The RF tends to flow on the surface of the grounding conductor, which is why you see people using flat copper straps. It's got a lot of surface area for the RF to travel on. Um, now, when we do that RF strap, we've got to remember that that RF strap goes all the way to our station ground. Um, it's possible to, to note, I mean, you're supposed to use number six wire at a minimum to complete your grounds from the house, but the number six wire doesn't have that much surface area. So a lot of people will use a strap all the way out to that ground terminal. Now, if you've got a ground that shows not very good with the ground meter, it's probably not very good for RF. If the ground shows that it's really good with this thing, that improves the probability that your ground is also good at RF. Now, the way you'll know it's good at RF is basically by trying it. Um, and making sure you don't have RF in your station, um, making sure that uh, everything seems to be working right, you're not creating EMI problems in the house or with the neighbors and so on. A good ground, good RF ground helps with all of those. Well, what we've done is we've looked at this uh, meter right here. Uh, I'm going to put an Amazon link for this on my website and I'll also put that in the uh, text that goes with the video and have fun with your ground experiments this is three hundred dollars maybe a club might get one and then uh, have it to loan to its members um, you're not going to use this every day and it is a little on the expensive side but uh, uh, it's quite an interesting device, and I kind of reversed engineered it to figure out how to work. Uh, be sure to subscribe and like and do all those great things. Also, uh, if you would, please check out decastlercom support. It shows different ways that you can um, help financially with the channel, uh, doing things like buying test equipment and so on, and, and the reference station and so on. By the way, the upcoming video on the reference station, after we get the antenna up, then we got to talk about grounding. And we'll, we will talk about grounding, and we'll use this instrument uh, to advantage for that. So until we next meet, 73.